What's good, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. You already know what it is. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. You already know what it is. What your boys reacting to, y'all? We got LeBron versus Bronny. You dig know what I mean? But guess what? At the age of 18, you dig know what I mean? Not, you know what I mean? Not chat, y'all. Yeah, chat, you know what I mean? But hey, I want to tell y'all that um, I dropped a brand new video too. Uh, before this, check that joint out. It was a good one, very good one. It was about the it was about the uh the draft and stuff like that. But as we know, Ronnie's in uh college now. He is going to uh USC. Pretty sure yeah, yeah USC, alright. But they're going about to check this out, but to see what this is talking about. So hey, I wanna tell y'all that I thank y'all, I love y'all, keep much the family, I appreciate y'all so much. Let's get right into this, let's go. At age 15, one was averaging 25 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists. The other, 4 points. Hold up. Like, I don't know what y'all thought this was. I had to get signed, man. Because, listen, it is. Because, listen, man, it is literally 4 o'clock a.m. What are you talking about? You gotta get signed. Because, shoot, need some energy. <laughs> At age 15, one was averaging 25 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists. The other, 4 points. Three years later, they're both dominating the McDonald's All-American team. They play totally different positions, completely different play styles, live entirely different lives, but have the same name. This is LeBron James LeBron versus said, Bronny. He regrets that too. He regrets naming Bronny. Before the LeBron. championships, the MVPs, the money, the fame, before the legacy, LeBron was just an only child born to a 16-year-old single mother, Glory. <laughs> he would grow up in Akron, Ohio, where life was rough. I saw Brian guns, hear, drugs, boy. killing. It was crazy. His mother struggled to find stability, and he was moving as much as six times in a single year. But at eight years old, something would happen that changed the course of his life completely. A peewee football team. This is a piece of LeBron's story that seems to get overlooked time and time again, but we just might not know his name without. At the time, he was coached by a man named Frank Walker. His son was also on the team and friends with LeBron. He eventually became aware of LeBron's situation. At this point, he was missing over half his school days and decided to open his doors to him until his mother was able to get back on her feet. Just a couple years later, LeBron would be back with his mom, who was doing much better, but it was in this little window of time where LeBron's basketball career would begin, a career you could only describe as a rocket ship from this point on. I'll never forget what the Walkers did for me. He doesn't get the recognition he deserves. LeBron started playing rec basketball, then AAU. By middle school, something had become clear. This was not your everyday middle schooler. He was bigger, stronger, and faster than everybody. Legend has it that if LeBron's career was a video game, the first real boss he ran up against wasn't Carmelo Anthony, Kobe Bryant, Stephen Curry. It was his middle school teachers. See, his school had something pretty cool, a yearly faculty versus student game. The teachers had never lost. But if there was going to be one player to change that, it's LeBron. The teachers might have been undefeated, but so was the 8th grade team that season. There was nothing in that moment they wanted more than to crush the ego of the teachers. <laughs> the leader of the faculty squad was the gym coach, who recalled the game saying, They ran us to death. <laughs> they were <still laughs> them, if not more. They were probably up 20 at halftime. Following an embarrassing defeat that night, that gym teacher would actually bring home one of the basketball rims. Why? Well, something else happened in that game. Something etched in the minds of everyone in attendance. LeBron got a breakaway and threw down his first of many in-game dunks. It was moments like this that caused word to spread and fast. Ooh, it that, wasn't man. just the basketball court. He was dominating the football field, the sport some thought he had just as high a chance to go pro in. Few and Akron were unaware of this insane athlete. The man amongst children. A local celebrity. Scouts were calling, but most of the nation was still rather unaware. But that changed fast. LeBron decided to attend at St. Vincent St. Mary's for high school. Mm -hmm. He stepped on the campus at six foot two, was growing like a weed, and by tip off of the opening game, it was over for everyone in his way. He would average 18 and six, led them to an undefeated 27 and 0 record, and took home a state title. Hype and excitement surrounding the freshman was growing like a cordyceps. By the end of the year, he was six foot five and solidified himself man. as the most sought after yeah, prospect man. in the country. Sophomore year would be the season he went to the national stage. If you knew basketball, you knew LeBron. He averaged 25, 7, and 6. The demand to see him was so insane, the team had to move some of their home games to the University of Akron's 
5,500 seat arena. The team repeated as state champions and LeBron won Mr. Ohio basketball and made USA Today all USA first team honors. The first sophomore to ever do he either. Not playing, At this boy. point in high school, Michael Jordan wasn't even making his varsity team. By the start of his junior season, he wasn't just one of the most well-known basketball players. He had become one of the most well-known athletes on the globe at any level in any sport. It was in this season where we saw Sports Illustrated grace their cover with the high school junior, deeming him the chosen. <laughs> An article praising him <laughs> as the next <laughs> Jordan, emphasizing his placement as the top prospect, and even predicting a record shoe deal coming his way. On Bro, you know what's ever, crazy? I used to want those shoes back in the day, so like I never got them. So like I got the, and even predict I got it. It was black and like green. I forgot which ones. It wasn't these though. But I would always put these on my 2K player. Yeah. A record shoe deal coming this his is way. one of them. One of them. On the court, he was averaging 28 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists. He was the first junior in history to win National Player of the Year. St. Vincent St. Mary's had a 23 and 4 record, but they fell just short of a title. He was doing this on the court while making all state honors on the football field. Following the year, LeBron was pushing for the NBA to adjust their eligibility rule. If it ended up being successful, it wouldn't have been a debate. He was going to be Houston's first overall pick in the draft over Yao Ming. In some sense, his senior season was a farewell tour. There was nothing left to prove. There were no doubters left. Football was on the back burner due to a wrist injury. It was really just a waiting period for the now 6'8 forward to hear his name called as the top pick. Let me tell you something. Let me be a sophomore 6'5". Do you know what I'm doing, bro? I'm hurt, bro. Like, I'm like, I'm already nice, but like, let me, let me, bro, let me throw some six five on that joint, and then when I hit senior, bro, let me be six eight. Oh my gosh, bro! Oh my gosh, kids will be crying. Oh my gosh, kids will be fuck, man. That season, the team was flying around the but country. But you know, I chose a different lifestyle from, junior year. Facing off against nationally ranked teams and media companies were cashing in. ESPN broadcasted a game against basketball powerhouse Oak Hill. But the schools didn't matter. Everyone was tuning in for that matchup of LeBron and versus Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Anthony. We saw Time Warner Cable offering the games for paper, something I've never seen outside of combat sports. He effortlessly put up 30 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. He took home his second national player of the year and again won a state title, making that three in four years. Now, he didn't avoid controversy. His mom somehow got a loan based on his future earnings, a loan that was used to buy him a brand new Hummer for his 18th birthday. This prompted an investigation for obvious reasons, but he was cleared of any wrongdoing. Shortly after, though, it was discovered he had accepted $900 worth of throwback jerseys in exchange for a picture. <laughs> Love this led to being stripped of his high school eligibility, but after an appeal, that would go down to just two games and he finished off the year. The NBA didn't care about any of that. He left high school without any major injury or personality concerns. There was not a single doubt in any front office's mind, LeBron is the top pick. There's no doubt he's worth all the attention. There's nobody on either side of basketball, college or pro, who doesn't think he's great. I don't have a problem saying he's as good as Kobe or McGrady. He's a man amongst boys, a superstar in the making. Basketball-wise, he's the best high school player I've ever seen. These quotes aren't from TV talking heads or even scouting yeah, reports. They're straight passion. from the mouth of NBA general managers leading up to the 2003 draft. Now sure, you saw hesitancy from some when it came to guaranteeing a superstar career, but for these GMs, success in the draft dictates whether or not they have a job. I don't think they feel comfortable guaranteeing anything in this sport. For everyone else that had nothing to lose, the expectations were nothing short of a Hall of Fame. Imagine if they never did draft. To Going into the draft man. lottery, fan bases are on the edge of their seat. It didn't matter that there were other incredible prospects, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, the freshman that just won a national title, Carmelo Anthony. The number one pick is all that mattered. There were two teams tied for the worst record. The Cavaliers and Nuggets, they had about a 25% chance. Right after that, you had the Raptors and Heat at around 15%. This whole story is just made for the big screen. And another example is the Cavaliers winning the lottery, securing the top pick, a team that played just 40 minutes away from where LeBron had lived his entire life. He wasn't going anywhere. LeBron was a high school legend. No one was ever gonna be able to take that away from him. But in the winter of 2003, that didn't matter. All eyes were on his next journey, a journey oh, yeah, that would begin on October 29th, the most anticipated debut in sports history. Everyone and their mom was tuning in. They wanted to be able to say they saw the beginning of something great. And well, within possessions, we saw him show off his passing ability, throwing in hey. within minutes 
we saw the town as a scorer hitting a fadeaway jumper off the dribble. Within a quarter, we saw the jaw-dropping athleticism throwing down a breakaway dunk. Within a game, we knew. We weren't going to be disappointed. The future of the league had arrived. He finished the night with 25 points, 9 assists, and 6 rebounds, shooting 12 for 20 from the field. That level of pressure, not even phasing an 18-year-old kid, is something special to look back on. Just a couple weeks prior to that legendary night, LeBron had another life-altering moment. His high school girlfriend, Savannah Brinson, would give birth to his first son. That child's name, LeBron James Jr., or as we know him, LeBron. LeBron. As a young child, we didn't see or hear much from Bronny, but that wasn't surprising. You saw clips of him shooting around with LeBron, like the one from the 2010 All-Star game. You might have seen him on some social media posts, but that was about it. You never heard someone mention LeBron's son, nothing like you see with Deuce Tatum today. But Bronny wasn't that old before it all changed. Now, sons of players have always been a fascinating phenomenon. Some of the best players in the league today and throughout history are second-generation players. Curry, mm -hmm. Booker, Clay, Darius Garland, Andrew Wiggins, Brunson, Sabonis, Kobe Keep Bryant. Going. All these guys are sons of players, but what's fascinating is there seems to be a lack of top-tier players spreading across multiple generations. Yeah, guys like Arvita Sabonis, Michael Thompson, and Del Curry had respectable careers, but no all-star appearances. Where are the all-time greats? The top second-generation success story for the all-timers is probably Gary Payton Jr. or Tim Hardaway Jr. But even for those two, it depends what an all-time grade is. Of the top 20 players, the closest we've probably seen is Sharif O'Neal. Then within the top 20, the only player you can really compare to LeBron is Michael Jordan, who actually happened to have two sons. Jeffrey Jordan made it to the collegiate level, but managed just two points a game across five seasons. His younger son Marcus fared a little bit. <laughs> Marcus! At UCF, averaging 13 a game. All time nah. grade is a tiny list. We're dealing with a small amount of children, and even smaller that actually yeah, pursue basketball. They've just been having fun. But we do know, you, you, you know. the son of a legend doesn't guarantee you much, especially at the highest level. So in 2014, when someone hands you their phone, you pulled up, and tells you to check out LeBron's son, you know these They're are just 6th graders. You know it's unlikely he carries on LeBron's legacy, but within seconds, you're not thinking of that. You weren't even thinking of his future in high school or even college. You couldn't help but imagine another LeBron James dominating the league for 20 years. Now that name was doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it came to his middle school recognition, but let's be honest, he was legitimately impressive. You didn't see a lot of his dad in his game. He was destroying 12 year olds yeah. with his handles and shooting. This just got you thinking again, what if he ends up as a six foot nine freak of nature, but now has these skills? To we shoot. didn't get to see much film from LeBron in middle school. Most of the hype was locally and through traditional outlets. For Bronny, it was the opposite. Every was single everywhere. day, whether it was what? AAU or middle school basketball, he was going viral. No. The social media hype machine was going crazy. It was Julian Newman, Matt McClung, <laughs> Bronny James. But while guys like Newman and McClung struggled to get legit recognition, Bronny was being listed as a top recruit in the country. LeBron even posted on his story showing him as a 25th ranked player in the class. It's not a coincidence these rankings don't have a great track record, but it was promising. By 8th grade, he was passing the eye test when it came to his scoring. His athleticism was transforming his game. We even saw a few of those rim grazing dunks, but the real questions were about to get answered. How would he fare with the physical jump to high school basketball? And how tall was he going to be? At the time, he was roughly 6 foot. Not quite on piece for his father's frame. Mm. You want to get close to it? I'm already a fan. Oh my god. But something close wasn't out of the question. LeBron went to a small school in Akron, Ohio. Bronny decided to attend Sierra Canyon, one of the biggest high school programs in the nation. He was going to be sharing the court with some of the highest ranked senior recruits like Brandon Boston and Zaire Williams, both guys that became NBA draft picks. Bronny wasn't going to get the chance to run the show from the jump. In fact, he didn't even start. Yeah. He debuted with 10 points, had a season high 17, and finished the year averaging 4 points on 15 minutes a game. Just developing, By his sophomore honestly. season, it had become relatively clear the future like, for him was at the guard well, position. Huh? He was now unofficially around 6'2", while his top-ranked peers were popping up to staggering heights. Despite the small role and limited production, his ranking hadn't budged. The ESPN rankings were out, and he debuted as the 24th player in the class. So now with a chance at a bigger role at Sierra Canyon, things were getting exciting. Excitement that came to a screeching halt. During the preseason, he would suffer a torn meniscus. He underwent surgery, made it back for a game at the end of the year, but scored just 7 points. While a lot of the blame can be put on this injury, ahead of his junior year, we started to see him slip in the rankings. By the start of the season, he was down to being just the 50th recruit. At this time, you really started to see people question his NBA future. Coming off a pretty serious injury and nursing injuries throughout the season, his production was again not where we wanted it to be. 
The next LeBron James was averaging 9 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists. He wasn't even the biggest headline coming out of his team at the time. It was Drake dating his teammate's mom. The following summer was extremely That's important crazy. for Bronny. In some crazy aspects, boy. it was a make or break AAU season, and he stepped up to the table. The now 6 foot 3 guard was showing off a plethora of new jaw dropping dunks, a stronger frame, and a well rounded game. By the end of the year, he jumped back up in the rankings, now at 40. Then we got to the season we just saw from him, his senior year at Sierra King, like where no surprise, it was his best year to date. He averaged 14 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists. On paper, it's nothing crazy, especially for high school basketball, but we need to remember it's a top recruit filled roster. There's a lot of mouths to feed. The most important thing was seeing his development. By the new year, he was up to the 34th recruit. Today, He's the 28th. He's separated by just 10 players for that five-star status. He was able to secure himself a spot in the McDonald's All-American game. He just played in it recently and put the world on notice. I he want to be into it. I didn't get to. Five of his eight threes. The one thing we really need to emphasize is that Bronny is now being looked at as a lottery-level NBA draft prospect. Almost every outlet has him projected as a one-and-done first-round pick. Some outlets, such as ESPN, have him going inside the top 10. They said, as most of his peers have flatlined the past 12 to 18 months, James has grown, filled out his frame, found another gear with his explosiveness, and became an absolute terror off the ball defensively thanks to his outstanding intensity and feel for the game. I can't wait. He still wait. has plenty of room to improve his ball handling and flip jumper to become ready. a more prolific and efficient shot creator, but he's already got the eyes of NBA decision makers with the way he contributes to winning and will likely continue to grow and fill out his frame. Okay. This is not just LeBron's son anymore. This isn't just a kid with exciting highlight videos on YouTube. It's he's an NBA prospect. Things are getting exciting, but how does 18-year-old Bronny stack up to his dad's 18-year-old self? The size wasn't quite passed down. Coming into the 2003 draft, LeBron was standing at 6'8", to go along with a 7-foot wingspan and weighed 245 Bryce? pounds. Bronny's oh. being listed at 6'3", 180 pounds. We don't know his official wingspan, but it is clear that it's more than sufficient. The two's play styles might be just as different. At 18 years old, LeBron took advantage of his freak of nature size and athleticism combo to dominate as a wing, scoring changed, at the basket dude. with ferociousness and ease. It was this combined with his natural passing talent that made him must-see TV. It felt like every basket he was involved with, whether he was taking the shot or not. Defense wasn't a priority in high school, but considering the physical tools, no one even bothered thinking about that being a concern at the NBA level. Yep. The only thing scouts had some question marks surrounding was his shooting. He showed a prolific mid-range game, but inconsistency came at three-point range, a line that was going further back at the NBA level. Right, he was yeah. a very similar player at 14 and 18. Bronny wasn't. Bronny spent most of his youth as a lean point guard. He didn't get to the player we see today overnight. Now, over the last year or so, we are seeing this big jump in his ability above the rim. It is in those moments where you see his father's game showing through, but this is mainly just in the open court. Today, scouts love his ability as an offender and unexpected development. They love his shooting from outside, which was on full display during the All-American game. Scouts look at him now as a combo guard, possibly even a full-time two guard in the future, with his ability to shine off the ball. LeBron ran the show every second he was on the court. Bronny takes what comes to him and plays a high IQ game that's quickly adapted. I do want to see Bronny take over though. Their like. production shouldn't even be compared. LeBron played a pretty low level of competition most of his high school career with yeah. the free reign to do whatever he wanted when he wanted. Bronny, as we said, played at the top level of high school basketball alongside some of the biggest names in high school basketball. Interesting take. LeBron averaged 18, 6, and 4 as a freshman, 25, 7, and 6 as a sophomore, 28, 9, and 6 as a junior, and 30, 10, and 5 as a senior. Bronny averaged 4 as a freshman, didn't play as a sophomore, 9, 3, and 3 as a junior, and 14, 6, and 3 as a senior. While both were considered top recruits, different classes to say the least. LeBron sat above the rest as the number one high school recruit in the country, ahead of Lou Aldang, Shannon Brown, and Kendrick Perkins. All guys off to college. The real ranking was the draft order. Again, he sat in tier of his own, ahead of Darko Milicic, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwayne Wade. Bronny's been a four-star recruit his entire career. He was ranked as low as 50, but today sits as a 28th player in the country and 8th player at his position. Debates surround his draft stock, but as of right now, over a year out from the 2024 draft, most outlets project him as a mid-lottery to mid-first round selection. Their lives are a fascinating comparison. LeBron had a rough upbringing, spending time with different parental figures, moving constantly, and not even attending school for stretches of time. Bronny grew up as a son of an NBA yeah, superstar. Die, uh, so. He was living in mansions, driving nice cars, traveling around going, the world, surrounded by fame and riches. He also had a super stable household. His parents have been together his entire life. Now, by the time the two were 18, things just weren't that far apart. LeBron was a celebrity and had been for years. He was driving nice cars, hanging out with athletes and musicians, similar to Bronny. It's just a much different time. Bronny's got 7 million Instagram followers. He posts thousands of views on Twitch playing video games and is a part of being a kid, man. He's taking advantage of what comes along.
All right, y'all. So the camera died, and I ready to hold y'all. So look, I just wanted to just look. I wanted to leave out on this. It looks like he's headed to college, but his job's not finished. Job his not name finished. might guarantee him an NBA opportunity, but it won't guarantee him hearing his name called on draft night. It definitely won't guarantee a top placement, and we all know it won't guarantee success. Scouts like what they've seen, but this upcoming season is the most important season of his life. LeBron felt inevitable. Ronnie doesn't. The weight on his shoulders is astronomical. Will he live up to the hype or be another tale of what could have been? Oh, that's an interesting question. I, I, I won't cap. I didn't, I was not expecting all that at the end. But y'all tell me what y'all think. I want to tell y'all that I think I love y'all. Um, but yeah, camera did that once again. Um, but yeah, um, hope y'all did enjoy this. And yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness.